Good day, everybody. It's meteorologist Mark Molnar. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. We have a lot to talk about with the ongoing storm. We're going to touch on which areas will transition from rainfall back to wintry precipitation, see how much will fall. Also see those outlying areas of flooding concerns in some of those smaller creeks and streams. And we'll get into the damaging wind gust potential. Damaging wind gusts will be widespread across much of the Northeast, and we'll look beyond into the weekend, into the next couple weeks, through the end of February, beginning of March, see if there's any chance of a pattern reversal going into the rest of winter here, see if we can get some more winter storms. We'll touch on all that here, break it down for full analysis. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell button. Also, down below, there are timestamps if you wish to skip ahead. I won't be offended, and as always, leave a question or comment. I love to read and respond to your questions or comments. Let's get into it. All right, we're taking a look at the big impact here Thursday, late Thursday night into Friday morning here across the Northeast. This is where some of the strongest winds are going to occur. Uh, I basically have the scale 1 to 5 slight to extreme. And as you can see here, across eastern Pennsylvania, southern tier, eastern southern tier New York, Catskills, Poconos, into parts of New England here, so, uh, central New England. And look at this into southeastern New England, extreme these are where wind gusts could approach 55, 60 miles per hour and then potentially 70 miles per hour wind gust here in southeastern New England. So this is going to be an unfolding scenario here that we're going to watch. And I'm going to show you in the models uh, what is exactly going to happen. I'll use the latest mesoscale model to show you that. But we're dealing with a very large area of wind on the southeast side of where this low pressure system uh, moves. All right, I wanted to show you the wind field with this system. It's pretty intense here. So we get into later Thursday night here. Take a look at this. This is approaching, wow, look at this. Right around just after midnight here, Binghamton, New York, 64 mile per hour gusts at the airport, 66 down here into southwestern Pennsylvania along the ridge top, 62 in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. And watch as I put this in motion. There's the there's the frontal passage there as the low pressure is moving. This is basically the path of the low pressure. That's pretty interesting there. So take a look at this. We put this into motion. This is still continuing 40, 50, 60 mile per hour gusts here. Um, and we get some gusty winds behind the system. But the big show is to the east and northeast of this low. This is really interesting. Look at this. Some of these gusts, if they verify... We could be looking at a tremendous amount of wind here across the northeast. This is right around sunrise on Friday morning. Look at this, 70 miles per hour near Boston, 79 here out here in Cape Cod, 62, 64 here in New York City, 61 in Atlantic City, uh, finally calming down a little bit here to the northwest, places like Binghamton and Williamsport. But this is a lot of wind for a long duration period of time here. And we finally don't get rid of it here until just around noon. So, yeah, watch out for that. All right, let's cut to the chase here. Let's look at the wintry side of the system really quick first here. Uh, right around six inches here in Detroit, according to the G uh, GFS. Look at that, four inches in Burlington. Northern tip of Maine, we're getting upwards of 12, 15 inches. Right around three inches in Cleveland, four inches in Buffalo, four inches in Erie. Um, so there you have it. Some of these northern mountains could get anywhere from three to five inches too. This will be turning uh, to snow. The snow will be falling late Thursday night into Friday morning. Um, so if we take a look at the high resolution Euro, take a look at this. So we put this into motion right around the same amounts here. This is pretty darn good agreement here. Two, three inches in Cleveland, three inches in Buffalo. Look at that, Ogdensburg, New York, upwards of a foot here. So this is interesting, clipping northern New York State and northern Maine there with about a foot, so 9 to 12 inches of snow. Um, now, what is the NAM 3 kilometer doing here? Well, let's take a look. Uh, pretty similar totals here. Not too bad. So there you have it. There's the snowfall mount. All right, let's take a look at the NAM simulated, basically simulated 3 kilometer radar here. We're putting this into motion. Big old thunderstorms here across the southeast, continuing into the overnight as we head, you know, well past sunset Thursday and Thursday night here. We're going to have this uh, rain change to a mixture of sleet and freezing rain into parts of there it is, uh, northern Ohio there. So you're going to want to watch out as the rain changes over. And look at that. 
It's the big old thunderstorms here, complexes across the southeast. So these are going to be nocturnal. You're going to have tornadoes, damaging wind. It's going to move more into a linear threat overnight, Thursday night. And heavy snow continuing back. There will be a dry slot working into western Ohio here. Rain continuing anywhere from a half to three quarters of an inch across New York and Pennsylvania. 995 millibar low strengthening. This is right where the wind is going to howl. And I'm going to show you momentarily those winds as they really pick up across the northeast. Take a look at the snow shield here on the northern end. We will get dry slotted here a little bit into eastern Ohio. But we'll rain changing the snow here in Cleveland. Uh, maybe some sleep pellets and freezing rain mixed in. Um, and look at this, the real early morning hours just just before sunrise here. We start to move that rain snow line into western New York, western Pennsylvania here into parts of the Susquehanna Valley of upstate New York. A 989 millibar low. This is where the strongest winds will be on the eastern end of this. And heavy snow continuing, strong thunderstorms continuing down into the southeast here. Let's actually get into zoom in mode into the northeast here. This is where we have the storm system at this point, um, right around just before sunrise. There's that rain snow line moving in. So just as you're getting ready to move out to work or school, look at that. It changes over to sleet pellets, snowfall, places like Binghamton southward. Some of these look a little convective in nature too. That's pretty interesting. So a 984 millibar low, we will be tapping into some of these stronger winds aloft and look at that we do get dry slotted here so any snow will be light on the back end here right around the i-81 corridor and it doesn't look like you'll really change over much here into new england so we'll continue with those howling winds and then the next system that moves in take a look at this on saturday big old snow squalls really big pronounced front here this is a 999 millibar Alberta Clipper style system and look at this this is right around here is just after sunrise and then we head towards noon look at this line of snow squalls here some of these could contain thunder and lightning so this could be quite interesting here across the northeast so we'll probably quick pick up a quick inch or less here and then that's interesting we have some shield of snow out ahead of this too as this frontal boundary blasts in and then we get some lake effect streamers behind this setting up all right, so take a look at the southeast here. We're going to head into the overnight Thursday night into Friday morning here, and we're going to continue with this severe weather threat. Take a look at the simulated radar here, the big old line along the cold front. We will have those individual cells out ahead of it east of Birmingham approaching the Atlanta area. Take a look at that. The line pretty much takes over at this point, so it will become a damaging straight line wind event. Watch this Atlanta. This is right around 4Z, so just a little bit after midnight here. Look at this. This line just pushing through the Atlanta area and then down and through parts of southern Alabama. And then we get into the early morning hours. It becomes a little bit more cellular, thankfully. So we threat is kind of diminished throughout the day Friday. Let's see if that comes back a little bit. Eh, not much. So that is very good news. Uh, we only have a narrow window of opportunity Thursday night into early Friday morning for some severe weather, mainly here in Alabama and Georgia maybe the panhandle of florida here all right so i want to show you the gfs and the euro heading out into next week see if we have any changes here we have high pressure area of high pressure into the east here and we'll take a look at heading into monday here there's that next system mainly going to be a rainmaker possibly severe weather again across the southeast here so we'll have to watch for that low pressure moving across the just north of the ohio valley at this point so Mainly a rain event again, snow here northwest of Chicago this time. So it'll be a little bit more to the northwest, a big old dry slot here into Wednesday morning. Um, so that system kind of washes out, not as strong as this previous system we've seen here. Um, and then we have another system organizing here across the southeast. This is Thursday of next week, uh, right around February 24th. Look at this. This is interesting because we got a big old strong 1080 or 1038 millibar high here and look at this we get overrunning precipitation here we get a low pressure moving up the spine of the Appalachians look at this heavy snow breaking out places along interstate 80 and around interstate 80 on northward here in Pennsylvania look at this low pressure forming another one pushing up through uh, Pittsburgh area here so heavy snow continuing this is Friday next Friday February 25th and look at that 
it transfers its energy to the coast. This is in, this is really interesting here because look at this. It's a 1040 millibar high here to the northeast. This is classic because you're pumping in that cold air here to the northeast. In fact, let's let's just zoom in here to the northeast, shall we? So here we go. So let's put this into motion. And we get into, there it is, low pressure transferring to the coast here and then pushing out slowly out to sea here. Now, it's not an unusually strong low pressure system, but it's very large and drawn out here. So as you see, going back to Friday, early Friday morning, look at this long duration snow event. That is really, really interesting. We'll have to see if this pattern holds here across the northeast for the GFS. Now, is the euro showing anything similar here? Well, let's take a look at this. Of course, we get into... Let's go to where we can get further out on the euro here. And here we go. So Wednesday, February 23rd, that system with the rain moves out. And then we get into Friday. The euro is a little bit, let's back up a few frames. It was a little bit warmer and more to, in fact, it has a low up here. So we'll have to watch it. Let's take a look at the uh, upper air pattern here. All right, take a look at the upper air pattern here. We'll start off with the GFS. See what it does with that ridge next week. So we have that trough pushing across here in the weekend. Most of the country is enjoying higher height averages here, ridginess. Big old ridge in here in the Gulf of Alaska. No blocking up here in Greenland. So look at that ridge strengthening here across the eastern part of the U.S. as this trough digs out west. Let's see what that leads us up to. A stronger ridge in the east, a stronger trough out west here. The response is... By Thursday, February 24th, we still have ridging here. So the GFS, is it right that it's going to be showing a low pressure system moving up the spine of the Appalachians here that Friday? We'll take a look at this. Here's the energy. Ever so slightly a little troughiness here. But I don't really see any energy coming into play until you get up here in the northern plains. So it's interesting that the GFS is holding on to this solution. We'll see if this holds. Um, we'll take a look. Let's go a little bit further out here. Yeah, not looking very good here into early March. That's changed a little bit from... But it's interesting, look at that. By the last frame, we do get some troughiness here. But if you take a look at the high-resolution Euro, if we put this into motion... There's the weekend trough with that Alberta clipper, but most of the country once again. So there's a pretty good agreement here. I've actually got to go back a little bit here to get further out on the euro. Strengthening ridge here in the east. Now let's see what the euro does with this ridge. Here's Thursday. Euro is showing a much northerly system than the GFS here. This is why it's caution with the GFS. Because look at the here. We have the euro holding the trough back here across the northern plains and strengthening the ridge back east here with no blocking whatsoever here to the northeast. So we're going to have to watch these solutions play out. We can definitely not say for sure whether we have an east coast snowstorm next week, but it's something we can watch here for. All right, let's take a look at the regional outlook here. We're looking at the northeast and then the southeast. We'll take the northeast first. For my Ohio viewers, I wanted to let you know I am going to try to expand my map further westward here to include you because I know a lot of my viewers are in Ohio, and I wanted to let you know that. So look for that in the coming weeks. Take a look at the cold front blasting through. The big story is going to be the damaging wind gusts. I am concerned earlier Friday morning, uh, from the I-81 corridor on eastward here, eastern Pennsylvania, Susquehanna region, over to the Hudson Valley, and then especially uh, towards sunrise and in, into 10 a.m. here across parts of New England. I am very concerned about southeastern New England here, damaging wind gusts over 60, 70 miles per hour, potentially widespread southeast of where this low pressure rides. Now, there will be some frozen precipitation uh, behind the initial low here so you will get some wind gusts you know with the snow and sleet and you know some freezing rain potential is some of this but freezing rain is not going to be the big story here it's going to be the wind and then we'll kick in some snow showers behind this as well so tumbling temperatures as well you can see near 60 towards the coast down into the 20s further inland here 
So damaging wind is going to be a big story here. We'll take this into Saturday. Next front moving in, yes, we're going to deal with 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. We are heading towards the month of March. It is technically the windiest month, especially across the northeast here. So we're going to be kicking some snow showers in here across Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Uh, maybe a couple inches uh, in this darker blue zone here, heading out into the Adirondacks and northern white and green mountains here. Now we get into Binghamton, Albany, State College area. This is where we could see about an inch or less. And then we head towards the coastline, not looking at much, but we will get a line of squalls here, snow squalls, that could have some thunder and lightning in, uh, mainly from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. here from the lakes eastward to the I-81 region, and then afternoon further east here. So watch for that. We head into Sunday. We really kick high pressure. We're finally going to get on the backside of high pressure here. Temperatures warming into the 40s across much of the region. 40 in Binghamton, 49 in Pittsburgh. Still in the 30s up here in New England. And we get into Monday. Take a look at this. We have a cold front to the north, pushing a warm front to the northeast off the map here. Most of these areas will get into the 50s, double nickels in Binghamton, New York City. Nice time to get out there and enjoy it, 62 in D.C. And look at this. We'll have some scattered showers towards uh, sunset here, so you'll pretty much make it through the day without much precipitation. Now let's get to the southeast here. Friday, cold front blasting through here. Thankfully, that severe weather outbreak that occurred on Thursday with some tornadoes and damaging straight line winds, large hail, will be moving to the east. However, the good news is we're not looking at any severe weather here in Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, or Georgia. So this is on the move. We will make it up to 85 in Miami here, 66, double double sixes here in Panama City, and cooling down to the 50s in New Orleans and 40s back here into parts of Alabama, Mississippi, still holding on to some 60s up to the northeast here. Saturday, we clear it out. Nice high pressure building in near 60 in Atlanta and Birmingham, 83 in Miami, and 60s along the Gulf Coast. And then we get into Sunday, not too bad. High pressure crusts. Over here in Virginia, you're on the backside high pressure, so you're warming up to 62 in Atlanta. We will have a return flow here. This is what you're going to want to watch because we're going to have some tropical moisture moving into the New Orleans area. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms for Sunday. This is a precursor for this front that's going to be developing and moving back to the northeast here. We could have some damaging wind, large hail, and isolated tornadoes across northeast Texas, right around Linden, over towards parts of northern uh, Louisiana here and over towards Mississippi and Alabama here. So we're going to watch this yellow zone on Monday. This is going to be an interesting time as we have a lot of turning of winds with height, veering of winds with height, and this could get some strong thunderstorms going. And extended outlook from Binghamton to Scranton, Upper Susquehanna River Basin. Friday through Tuesday, take a look at this. Windy conditions. That's what we're going to be looking at here. A lot of storm systems this time of year. It always gets windy here in the Susquehanna Valley. And that will be no uh, that, that'll be no different this year. Take a look at Friday. We have some morning snow showers, maybe some morning sleet pellets mixing in. Continuing to be very windy, wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour before 9 a.m. and then we'll taper it down to 25 miles per hour towards 5 p.m. Uh, temperatures not really warming up too much. Um, anything that was left over from the previous night will have frozen over at this point. So watch out for your morning commute into Saturday. We'll have that next system. Snow showers likely mainly between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, less than an inch, though. We're heading up towards 34. A low of 7 on Sunday morning. Sunny skies. Look at that Monday. Windy again as the warm front moves in 55. And then we're looking at three quarters of an inch of rain for Tuesday. Rain and wind, 54 degrees. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. Don't forget to give my social media pages some love. At Facebook, it's Mark. Also, at Weather Northeastern. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. It's just web at Weather Eastern. And also, you can visit my websites, MediaMark.com and WeatherNorthEastern.com. As always, thank you for joining me. Question or comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe.